Hey, what's up YouTube? Jeremiah Hersey here. Welcome back to the next PL300 test prep question. Today we're going to be looking at a question that is relating to restricting the information that the in report users see. Now there's several ways that we can accomplish this task. We're going to look at several of those here today. We're going to start in the Power BI desktop just to give you an understanding of how you can accomplish this goal and then we'll jump into our question. Let's go ahead and get started. So here we are inside the Power BI desktop and I wanna point out a couple things here. In the upper left hand corner, so you'll see these icons here. So these icons represent several different views available. So the first one is known as the report view. The second one here is known as the data view. And the last one here is known as the modeling view. So as we look at these different views, the report view is gonna be all of your visualizations, your slicers, your graphs, everything like that. The data view is going to be the actual data itself that's loaded into the Power BI desktop. So you can see the tables available. So I only have one table here with information. So as I click the data view, you can see the data that's available. It also gives you a row count down here in the bottom left hand corner. And the modeling view is how to create relationships between your tables. Now, because there's only one table, there are no relationships available, but this does give you an availability to change some of the properties relating to the table itself and the columns within inside of it. So if you hover over the table, you're gonna see this eye icon pop up. So this eye icon is going to allow you to hide columns from the report view. So if I click this eye icon here and I hide it, what that means is that in the report view, this 2021 column is no longer going to be available. So if I go back to the report view, you can see over on the right hand side that the 2021 column is now gone from that table. Now, this only hides the value from the report view. It's still loaded into the Power BI model and so that data is still available with inside of the desktop. So just because you hide it doesn't mean that it's not loaded with inside of the desktop, it still is. And if I right click here and I choose view hidden, you can see that the 2021 column now appears with that icon chosen, meaning that it is hidden. So it has the eyeball with the slash through it, meaning that that column is hidden from the report view. So that's the first way to minimize what columns are available for the end user to see with inside of the Power BI desktop when you publish out to the service. Those are not gonna be available. But if you have the proper permissions, you will be able to still see that information hidden and you could potentially change it as well. So as we look at the modeling view, there's other ways that we can change this. If you look on the properties pane on the right hand side, you're gonna see this section where it says is hidden. So notice I have the 2021 column selected here and is hidden slid to yes. If I choose 2022, you're gonna see the is hidden is selected no, meaning it is not hidden from the report view. So the hidden feature only hides it from the report view. You can still see that data inside the desktop or inside the Power BI service if you have the proper permissions to edit the report. So this doesn't actually get rid of that column, it just hides it from the report view. So if I want to remove the column, so I can just select 2021 and click delete here, and do I want to delete the 2021 column? I can select yes. This now removes it from the Power BI desktop. So it's no longer loaded. If I go inside of the Power Query Editor, once again, it's not going to be there. So as we see here, there is no 2021. You can also see the step over here on the right hand side in the applied step section to remove that column. So when we're talking about data model size, the data model size is affected by how many columns you have and how many rows you have. Because I have eliminated the 2021 column, I have now efficiently reduced my model size. 
So removing columns reduces the model size. And the last thing I want to talk about is row level security. So row level security is up here at the top and this is a way to manage security roles with inside of the Power BI desktop and you assign those roles in the Power BI service. Now this effectively limits data based on an email address but once again if you have the proper permissions you're going to be able to see all of the data. Currently the 2021 column is not available in this model and I could restrict this based on a specific role that I want to create in order to effectively limit what information is displayed to end users. But once again, if I'm looking at that 2021 column, if it's not loaded into the desktop, I'm not going to have it available. And so that is also going to reduce the model size as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at our test prep question. The question says you have a custom connector that returns ID from to subject body and has attachments for every email sent during the past year. More than 10 million records are returned. You build a report to analyze the internal networks of employees based on whom they sent emails to. You need to prevent report recipients from reading the analyzed emails. The solution must minimize the model size. So as always, let's look at some of the key pieces of information here. The first one is we need to be able to prevent report recipients from reading the analyzed emails. So with that, we have a couple different options here. So we talked about being able to hide the information. We also talked about removing the columns as well. And we also briefly talked about row level security or RLS. So we can prevent report recipients from reading the analyzed emails using these three options potentially. But the key piece of information that really is going to help us answer this question is the second sentence here. The solution must minimize the model size. This is the key piece of information for this question. Minimizing the model size. Remember, to minimize the model size, you must remove rows or columns from with inside of the Power Query Editor or the Power BI Desktop. And so as we look at these questions, we have to think about all parts of the question and how to answer it properly. So A says, from the model view, set the subject and body columns to hidden. Well, if we hide it, that is effectively going to prevent report recipients from reading the analyzed emails, but if someone has the proper permissions, they're still gonna be able to see those hidden columns. Additionally, hiding the columns does not minimize the model size. And that's a key piece of information here is minimizing the model size. So option A is not going to be correct because it doesn't effectively minimize the model size and if you have the proper permissions you're still going to be able to see those email content option b says remove the subject and body columns during the import well if we remove the columns during the import it is not going to be loaded into the desktop and therefore not going to be available with inside the power bi service as well so this is definitely a potential option for us Option C says implement row level security or RLS so that the report recipients can only see results based on the emails they sent. Once again, implementing row level security is a way to prevent report recipients from analyzing the emails, but if you have the proper permissions, you're still going to be able to access all of the information within the report. Not only that, but minimizing the model size means that we have to remove some of the information. And so just implementing row level security is not going to be effective enough for us to minimize that model size. So option C is not going to be correct. The correct answer is going to be B, remove the subject and body columns during the import. I want to thank you so much for joining me. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content. I'll see you in the next one.